Welcome to RC Racing. I'm John Hindorf, joined in the studio for this show by Nick Damon, back from Thailand. I was going to ask if you enjoyed Thailand, but we've seen the email, so we know you did. But what about the race action? Uh, Thailand was fantastic, John. Thank you very much. It was a great place to go, and I recommend anyone have a trip there that involves seven days of radio-controlled car racing. Well, the action was fantastic in Thailand as well, and we've got the second round of the 110th final coming up. But we're starting with the 112th World Championships, which is for once is on tarmac, and that caused some controversy. Let's go to Thailand. And the story of the World Championship really has been the tarmac surface. It's been very difficult to find tyres at work, and really only the Okomo and Associated team seem to have done it. In fact, the pre-race favourite at Sushihara didn't even make the A-final. We'll hear from it later in the show, but now let's go for John with commentary on the first 12th A-final. That is the associated of Neto Matsukura on pole position. Young sensation, Yuho Levinen from Finland in second position on the grid. Another associated. CRC is the choice of Hubo Honegel in third position. Mark Reinhardt, the German driver, the hot body in fourth position. So quite so many feet as we normally get on our grid walk here. Fifth, Hideo Kitsuawa from Japan. Sixth is Gilles Grokamp, the Dutch driver, another CRC there in sixth position. Seymour Ananemi, Corelli, seventh. Eighth, Timor Linu. Now, he'll not be racing with that body, actually. He's got a bright orange body that he's been running around on, and that will be his race body. That's uh, just for the cameras. Interesting. Ninth, Daisuke Yoshiko and Andy Moore scraping into the final in 10th place. So stand by for action in this first leg. Matsukura on pole position. Levenen in second place and they get the clean start. There's action all over behind us. Hooper Honigal gets taken out there and he's dropped all the way down to the back. And that's allowed the two leaders a clean run through the first lap here. Look at the gap that they've got already. Now in qualifying, it was a tail of tyres. Remember, these cars don't normally run on tarmac. And clearly, Matsukura and Levenen have got the right tyre choice. Comfortably qualifying ahead of the rest of the field. And it may be that that advantage also runs through into the race. Now that is the battle for third and fourth with Ananimi and Kitsuawa battling between themselves. Now there's that uh, bright orange car we were talking about earlier on, the ready orange machine of Timo Linu. Remember he swapped his body and he's battling with Mark Reinhardt there ahead of him, the German, recovering from that first lap incident. But it is the battle for third place at the moment that is the most interesting through the very complicated infield section. Look at that, really got to get the rhythm of that part of the circuit. And remember, these drivers, for the most part at least, certainly non, the non-Japanese drivers, not used to driving on the tarmac surface with these cars. It's caused a bit of chat, a bit of discussion. Now, here's Lino having a look at Reinhardt. This is for fifth position. He's coming through in front of us there now. Timo Leno, the Finn with the X-ray. In fact, I think he's pushing Reinhard to the battle ahead of them. So we've got second down to sixth there. All together, yes, they are catching, certainly. And Ananimi and Kitawa are going to have to be watching behind them because the next pair are dragging up towards them quickly. This is the battle for second and third. And yeah, look, a quick glimpse of the German's car as it comes through that long, long, long right-hander. And this is going to be a four-way battle very soon indeed. Now, we know that Reinhardt is an absolute master of concentration. Has a look round the outside there, tries to take a slightly different line, but can't get position to make the pass. He's super late on the brakes. One of the real advantages he has got. He seems to be able to hold on to the power and take a lot of momentum. And oh, off goes Timo Leno. 
bad mistake from him. Really got offline, hits the curb, airborne, and takes himself a little while to get going again. Now back to the lead. Nioto Matsukura. Nioto to his friends, thank goodness. He's still leading from Yuho Lebanon. The Finn in second place with the predictably blue and white associated. The leader, just 15. A real protege of Masami Hirosaka. And certainly repaying the confidence that the master has shown in him. He's been super smooth. Haven't seen too much of him here because really he's just gone off from pole position. And he and the Finn behind have just driven away from the rest of the field. They are the only two drivers using their tyres. And you can see they're coming up to traffic and that is going to be... A bit of an issue, but I don't think the Finn is close enough to even challenge as traffic comes on here. No, he's way too far back. They've got the tyre choice absolutely right. Slight mistake there by the leader, but he's got away with it. Such is the extent of his lead. Lebanon still in second place. There he is, and they're coming up on some traffic now. So the leader does have to be a little bit careful. Good heads up driving there but there's more to come in fact is that mark right it is it's mark reinhardt that the leader is catching when i was telling you about the advantage that these leading pair have with the tires and now the yellow car of nato is well he he's coming up to lap fourth position quite remarkable and there are some stunned looks from the watchers at the Side of the circuit here. Oh, and Reinhardt and the leader come together there, and Lebanon's gone through. Well, a mistake there by the youngster. Perhaps a little bit of inexperience. Reinhardt certainly looked to give him room. No, he was on the inside there, pushing too hard. Then the incident. Well, I don't think you can blame the Finn for that. Here it is again. Oh, did Reinhardt have a problem there in the middle of the corner? Looks like he turned left there. Maybe some kind of control problem. But the net result is that the Finn... Yuho Lebanon on the associate has gone and taken the lead. And as you see there, Nioto has not reacted well into the wall again. And this then is going to be a very, very easy victory for Yuho Lebanon qualified in second position. He and Nioto Matsukura driving away, lapping pretty much the whole of the rest of the field. Got the tyre choice absolutely right on the tarmac. And this will be a tremendous run then for Lebanon. He's kept his concentration. Got to say that he wasn't really challenging the auto before that incident. Perhaps, as I said, just a little bit of naivety, a little bit of inexperience by the young Japanese driver. It's really now down to Yuho just to keep it going. Coming through to complete the final lap. And there he goes through into the pits and takes it. And takes it by a considerable margin. The only man on the lead lap at the end. Yuho Levin and takes it from Nioto Matsukura. Effectively a full lap behind and everyone else more than that. Kitsuara in third, then Reinhardt, Anonimi in fifth, Andy Moore makes it up to sixth position from tenth. Good run from Andy. Well, the winner is down in the pit area. Nick Damon is there. I think that's what you'd call a convincing victory. You 11, a great leg one win. You must be delighted. Yeah, I can't complain. I got a little, a little bit lucky there, but that's racing. You were gaining and then you were losing. It was very, very tight. But of course, what happened when you two came together? I'm not sure what happened with the two. I... I tried to push hard to catch him, but couldn't. Like the gap stayed the same, no matter what. But luckily, there was an accident. So, so do you think he's actually got the pace in you as far as the next two legs are concerned, or do you, can you do something to get those couple of tenths back? Well, I think I've got a couple of tricks still <laughs> up my sleeve, so hopefully, I can catch him in the next one. You hope. Well done. Thanks. And now we catch up with a man who's already won one world championship this year, the one eighths. It's Japanese superstar Atsushihara. I want to take you back a couple of months yeah. because um, 
Of course, you became the one eighth Rallycross World Champion. I think mm -hmm. you're the first person to win a petrol off road, yes. and of course, a tarmac yes. World Champion as well. You must have been delighted at that. Yeah, it's like um, I start RC cars off road car first. So for me, for off road, it's like just normal for me. Mm -hmm. But I, I drive like uh, all the time off road and on road. So for me, just just different, but both fun. No one thought that you and the Hot Bodies car would win in America. Mm -hmm. I mean, how did you do it? <laughs> um, uh, we, uh, uh, especially this year, we have uh, more teammates from American drivers. Before, like uh, last two years, three years, I have only one team, only one drivers. Mm -hmm. So uh, difficult to win this race and uh, difficult to get some good tips from other team or off-road off technique. But I have now a good teammates from Americans and uh, some Europeans, so it's like more a bigger team. But now we move to one tenth and things are working again. Um, already you're setting the pace. I mean, you've, you've improved a lot already from the practice days. What have you been doing to the car? Um, actually, I do almost nothing. From uh, <laughs> I practiced here like a couple, like one month, two months ago here, and I uh, I find a good setup and I actually nothing this time. So <laughs> just keep running. You're running the Hot Body Cyclone. Is it much different from the car we saw Andy win two years ago, the World Championships with? Um, just, just a little bit. I think it's mainly like main parts. It's almost same. Just a little different, like refined to some small parts. So, but actually, it's car is almost same. <laughs> now, obviously, you worked very hard to develop the Hot Body's D8, mm -hmm. the Hot Body Cyclone, Hot Body Cyclone 12X. What's next? Um, <laughs> I think we have to looking for um, uh, some. New touring car for uh, next year. Maybe uh, we think maybe light bulb battery is coming soon. So we need to put light bulb batteries on the car and we need to need change more balance. And it's, yeah, we try to keep making more fun car and a racing car. So just keep working. See, thanks, Tokyo. Good luck for the rest of the meeting. Thank you very much. Now it's back to race action in Thailand. Let's join John Hindhoff with a second main A final for the 110th Touring Cars. Well, there is the poor man, Atsushi Hara. He'll want to avoid the problems he had earlier on. Only a fourth place finish for him first time round. There's Reinhard, the man who caused him those problems. In third position, Ronald Volker, the German. Now he got a second in the first race, so that's the score he carries forward. Victor Vilka, a sixth for him first time around. Masami Hirosaka takes the victory last time, so he will want again to get some good points here. In sixth position, Andy Moore, only a seventh place finish last time, had an early off, and he'll want to improve on that. Out the way, sir, please. Thank you. We're trying to look at the number seven there, the real star of the first race, and the one everybody's talking about, Elliot Harper, third position in that first race. Main V, local driver, then Matsusaki, Hiyoto, and right at the very back, it will be Gilles Grocamp, who got up to eighth, actually. He might have done a little bit better, dropped away towards the end of the race the first time around. So there is the grid. Hara got to get off the line quick. Now, that's Hir Hirasaka, won the first leg from fifth position. He was rather helping that. In fairness, once he got the front, he was very strong, but rather helped by... A contra Tom ahead of him, which Hara, the poor man, will want to avoid this time around. Well, he's got through the first couple of quarters. Problem further down the field was at Hiyoto. I think it might have been. Didn't affect the leading runners. Screaming through to complete 
the early running then. And it's still Hara, Reinhardt, Volker, and there's Victor Vilk defending against the first heat runner, Hirasaka. Just about kept him behind, and there's a bit of a train now behind the Swedish driver on the Tamiya. And Hara's getting away from the German. And there's that battle I was talking about. This is fourth down over. And as you can see, Vilka just not confident through the centre section, the technical section of this superb circuit. And he's under pressure now from the Heat 1 winner and multiple world champion Masami Hirosaka having a little look there. But for the moment, just held back by the Swede. I just wonder how much longer he can do that. This, of course, is good news for the guys ahead because they're trying to make up ground and score points. Remember, Reinhardt and Hara, who were at the head of the field at the moment, the other way around, actually, Hara and Reinhardt first and second. They've finished down in fourth and fifth position, and fifth at the moment is where the Heat 1 winner is behind that yellow car that we can see right in the middle of the circuit now. Love this circuit. A lot of braking to be done here. Relatively warm ambient temperatures. Got to be careful you don't overheat the tyres. Now it just looks as though that yellow car of Vilka is beginning to move around a little more. And I wonder if he's just doing too much. Meantime, back to the leads. And Hara, Reinhardt and Volker, as they were from the starting grid. And Sushi Hara on the Hot Bodies Cyclone. And he is just driving away at the moment from Reinhardt. Remember, they had a coming together in the infield in the first leg. Just over two and a half minutes still to go. Oh, and there, oh, there is the problem. The... Pressure as well. I was going to say the pressure has told on Victor Vilk. He was pushed rather. Got a little bit of a helping nose there by first week Heat winner Masami Hirosaka. And now, of course, he is up into fourth position. Good news for him. That means that ahead of him, if positions stay the same, only Atsushi Hara can match his first two round scores and one race to come. Remember, it's the best two of three race results to count towards this world championship leaders go through third Ronald Volker now he's got to be looking over his shoulder now and wondering if that multiple world champion Japan's Masami Hirosaka is beginning to close down on him Hara however is stamping his authority all over this one this Probably what he expected to do in the first race before he was unceremoniously tipped on his roof by the German Mark Reinhardt. But we're watching what could be very shortly the battle for third position with Hirosaka closing in on Ronald Volker. I just wonder if he can hold... Oh, he's really closed in there that last couple of laps, hasn't he? There's the leader. Now, where's the German in second? There he is. Reinhardt is not going to be a factor for the lead. The real battle in third position. Just got a shot of it there. There it is coming out the infield. You can just see the blue car of Ronald Volker. The hot body cyclone being closed down by Hirosaka. And that is going to be the interest as far as the point scoring is concerned. And he's holding his position. There they are just going off. Coming down to the last half minute of racing now. And it's still Hara, Reinhardt, Volker and Hirosaka. Top four. Stays as it is. The two Japanese drivers will be tied on their scores with a deciding leg to come. But this is the battle for third position. And Hirosaka having dispatched... Victor Vilk, the Swede, into the barriers earlier on. is pushing hard for extra points. He won't catch this man, Hara, who wins it. There's Reinhardt in second. Oh, and just holding on at the line there and sliding sideways. Ronald Volker. 
Well, that result has set up a cracking final race. Let's uh, check the second leg results. Asuchi Hara takes it from Reinhard Volker in third, Hirosaka in fourth, then Andy Moore up to fifth, Elliot Harper in sixth. And the rest of the results behind Poe Victor Vilk finishing 10th there. But look at what that means as far as the scores are concerned. Because a three-way tie in terms of points at the top of the table. The two Japanese drivers both on 17 joined by uh, Volker there. But Volker doesn't have a win yet. So he is slightly at a disadvantage. Reinhard with 15 points and Elliot Harper the best of the Brits on 13. Right, let's pick up the stories from the second leg then. Nick Damon down in the pits with the drivers. As uh, Sushihara, the last race very difficult. This one seemed very easy. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think it's probably a driver, especially with the first MA. I have two, two numbers, and then uh, I always like thinking, like, block to the behind the car. But now I was only, only thinking, like, like, my driving. So next ones, I just keep same, same like this. So. Did you change the car much between the two races? No, almost not, nothing. Only, only driver changed. <laughs> Mark Reinhardt, you didn't crash with uh, Hara this time, but of course also you couldn't catch him. Why was that? Uh, yeah, the car was not as good as uh, in the first final. So I think in the beginning I can follow him, but then in the middle of the race to the end, he's a little bit faster, like one or two tenths per lap. So I will try in the last main, maybe just to save my second place to get the second at the World Championship, or I will try hard to, yeah, maybe to attack him a little bit to finish first, but we will see. Second, no, second, Second place is first loser, Mark. You're a world champion. You have to go for it. Exactly. But if I, if I try to overtake him and I crash and uh, someone else passed me, then I may be fourth or third or whatever. So better to be second and we will see. Thanks, Mark. Well, I'm quite surprised at the views expressed there by Mark Reinhardt, the German. He's kind of writing himself off, saying he's going to be conservative, but he's off grid too for the third and decisive race in the Touring Car World Championships. And I'm not sure... Well, is he just trying to psych people out, or does he genuinely think he's not in with a chance? Well, I think you saw how surprised I was in the interview. In fact, I was stammering so much, you thought it was actually a mistake on the editing machine. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, any one of the top five drivers can win. That's a great thing. We've had a mix-up race twice in a row. So, really, it is anybody's race. And, of course, that's what we'll be seeing next month on RC Racing, as well as the conclusion to the 112 World Championships. So we finish all our coverage and tyre next month in a jamboree of world champions here on RC Racing next month. What are you laughing at?